I'm Kara and this is DIY on the house. As Ross promised in the last video on how to make a rug loom, now I'm going to show you how to make the rug. Okay, before we get started, I'm going to use the term warping on the rug. And so you know what I'm referring to, this is what warping is. It is the simple motion going up and down and you want to have a solid color for this. I'm going to show you how to do this in a little bit, but I wanted to let you know or let you see what warping is. On the warping, I wanted to show you it does and it doesn't matter what color you pick. On this one, I did use a green warping, and on this one, I used a tan. You cannot tell by looking at the front of the rug what color the warping is. I would have to say, though, if I would have used purple, it might have shown up. So you're gonna want to find a fabric that complements it. For the warping, you're going to need approximately two yards of fabric. I have two samples of rugs that I've made that we actually use these daily in our house. This one uses a light and dark fabric at all times. One light, one dark, and that gives you the pattern that you see here. It's more of a consistent uh, pattern. This one I love just as much, it just is random. You can use two darks, two lights, one of each, and it gives you just a different look. Today, we are going to show you how to make this rug and which fabrics you need to make that happen. The fabric for a rag rug is super simple. It's whatever you have in your closet. It is a bed sheet, it is a curtain, it is a tablecloth. In front of me, I have the fabric that I want to use to make a light and dark combination rug for our bathroom. I want to have it in the greens tones. I could tease you and tell you you need exactly this much fabric, but I don't know the answer to that. You use just scraps. You use everything you can find. You probably do need a little bit more than two yards plus or minus of fabric total, but even a little piece like this is good for a rug. Anything goes. You can go flannel. This one that I'm going to be using is actually leftover. Um, it's like a suede fabric. So think outside the box and now I'm going to show you what you need to do with that fabric. Okay, I am so excited. This is the fun part, getting your fabric together. You have two ways that you can make this happen. One is you need to either rip or cut them into an inch, inch and a half, two inches. It is a super forgiving project, so you just need to rip strips. I prefer ripping them if we're on a road trip and uh, you're driving and I can just rip all along while I'm in the passenger seat. Ross doesn't think it's as cool as I do having this noise in his ear, but it is super handy just to be able to use the time to rip your strips, inch and a half, two inches. If it's a little narrow, no biggie. You take your strips, these are your colored ones, you take your strips and you just roll them in a ball. When you get to the end of this one, you just pick up the next one and you add to it. You're not joining the colored strips at this point. If you don't have a road trip planned or no time in front of the TV that you can sit and rip your fabric, this is just as fast. But I do warn you, if you're a quilter, you need to not worry about precision on this. Don't worry that this line right here is not going straight down the, the mark. Get that out of your um, concern right now because it doesn't matter. So you just line it up to where it's roughly a half an a one and a half inch to one and a quarter inch and you just cut move over your ruler and cut, zip it, and look at this. This one here is about a, an inch and a quarter, no big deal. So we do the same thing. We take your pieces and you wrap them in a ball. And the reason you want to do this now is because when you I start weaving the rug, things get going really quick and you want to have it all at your fingertips. So I just wrap them together and they're ready to start making the rug. Okay, now we're cutting the warping fabric. You do this exactly the same uh, manner. You cut them in one and a half inch strips. This one, you do need to cut approximately two yards of this. If you're going to be using a solid white, like I am going to be in the design, keep on cutting it until you have probably about three yards of white. 
there is a little difference on the ball that I made a little bit ago. These are the colors that go horizontally. You do not attach the ends at that point. For the warping ones, the ones that go vertically, you take two ends, you lay them together, and you put a little snip in both of them. Lay the snips on top of each other so at this point you can put your finger through it. One's going one direction, one's going the other direction. Bring the tail up from the bottom and now you have joined your fabric. Okay, just in case you missed that, I'm going to do a little closer view on this. For all of your fabrics, even when you are weaving, but at this point you are going to need to do this connecting method on your warping fabric. So you have your two ends, you lay them on top of each other, you fold them in half, do a little snip, I would say it's roughly a half inch snip. You lay them on top of each other, one tail going to the left, one to the right. Your hole is in the middle and you bring up the tail through the end and pull it tight. So now at this point there's one connector and there's two connectors. You need to connect all of your warping fabric. So at the, you will have, I don't even know, 50 yards maybe of this long uh, strand. So you get the end and you just roll it in a ball. The warping fabric is continuously connected now I'm to this end, I'm going to connect it one more time and you just keep doing this method until you have a ball that is full of approximately two yards of fabric. And don't worry if you get down to the end and you're like, shoot, I undershot, I need another four yards. No big deal, you just add it at that time. Oh, I'm so excited. This is the best part. I showed you how to get the fabric together. Now I get to go play, make the rest of this into one and a half inch strips. The next time the camera comes on, we get to start making the rug. We now have our ball of warping fabric that I have attached end to end. So we have one continuous string of fabric. To begin with, you tie a knot just a, a very simple knot. It's not a slip knot because you don't want it to give. So we're just going to go through the middle there. You're going to want your opening where my fingers are here to be about two or three inches. Um, and the tail, it doesn't matter because it's going to get cut off. But So just a, a long enough tail that you can uh, hold on to it. So here's a little loop. You put it on one, uh, or the first nail on one side. Bring it down to this end. Sorry, my loom moved on me. And we just go back and forth, keeping it a little tight. You don't want to stretch it to where it's uh, uncomfortable, but you want it to be a little tight. And just a second here, we are going to go warp speed. Okay, now that you've got to the end, just take scissors and give yourself a good 12 to 14 inches. This is going to be wasted fabric, but you just need to have enough fabric to tie another knot. And so we're going to make sure that's nice and tight there. I'm going to go under, go up and through, and tie a knot. It. There we go. Okay. There is your warping. For this rug, this is the fabric that I have uh, picked to use. I wanted to end up with a 
green, blue, and yellow uh, color theme with white on um, every row. Uh, when I pick out fabric, I like to have some that might have just a odd punch to it. This one has an odd orange and green, and this one has a darker blue. Those really add variety to the rugs. Okay, this is where the transformation begins. We're going to start putting the fabric on your warped loom. First, you need to take the rod and insert them in the side of the eyelets. If you missed how to make this loom, check out the video in the link below. But these rods are key to making a square rug. The rods will act as a piece of the fabric, so when I weave, I weave around a rug and come back. That way they are nice and tight. Hence the reason you want eyelets in the center of the loom so that when you're, you're weaving and you're putting stress on the rods, they won't cave in onto the side. On this rug, I'm going to always have a white and a color while I'm weaving it. So to start with, you take your two ends, you fold them over you know, roughly an inch, make a half inch snip in it, now lay them end for end and take the tail of one and put it through that hole. So now you have attached a color and a white. And okay, to start, I start on the right because I'm right-handed. You can start on either side. Pull one color, one tail, through that first hole of the knot that you made. And take the other tail down and back up the next hole. So simply you're going to come up one, take the tail down and back up the next hole. Now you are set up to have the rhythm of the color goes behind and comes forward. The white goes behind and comes forward in the next hole. The color goes behind and comes forward in the next hole. Now the white goes back and comes forward in the next hole. So by having always a color and a white, and so then you give it a little tug and you squish it up to the top. So by having a light and a dark, you always are going to have white color, white color, white color. And you're going to continue this all the way across. And I'm gonna just go ahead and finish. I am choosing, because of the pattern that I know that this will make, I'm choosing to always have short pieces of the color. By that, you're not going to have a solid green all the way two or three times and then yellow. You're going to have a splash of green and then a different green. That you're, I like the look of the short. I have done the, the long rows as well, but on this particular rug, I wanted short color throughout. Okay, so we're almost to the end of this tail, and we're just going to simply attach another color. So the white can be long. I don't usually make my solid one much longer than three or four feet because it does get a little cumbersome to pull through uh, the uh, warping fabric. So I'm getting to the end here. I'm going to pull my color through. I'm going to tighten it one little tug, push it all to the top. And pick my next color. Okay, I'm going to attach a yellow. This one already had a slit in it uh, from maybe another project, so I'm going to put a slit in this one. I'm going to put them end for end. I just stick my finger through it so that I can bring the tail forward. Pull it tight, and now you can continue. And one reason that um, you might choose to do longer strips and longer rows of color are less knots. The knots do not bother me on the finished rug. It actually gives um, a little bit of texture to it. So on this one here, I want the yellow to be showing. So as I am uh, weaving it, I'm just going to make sure that the wrong side is folded in and just continue to the end and now I get to show you how to go around the rod. So now we're here to the end. I'm going to 
give it a little tug, push it to the top. Now we are treating this rod as if it is fabric. So now that the color goes around, comes back up, the white comes around, comes back up, and you'll know if you did this right, if it be creates a alternating pattern. So now it's white and yellow. So yellow goes to the back, comes forward, white goes to the back, comes forward, and now you have alternating warping uh, rows as well. So I'm going to pause here a second and show you what I re am talking about. So it's yellow, white, yellow, white. So you're going to have that kind of a pattern all the way down as well as all the way across. And it just is a fun pattern. If you did not worry about the pattern, like in, um, here's a picture of a couple of rugs that I have made that um, I'm not concerned about the pattern. That uh, is a, a really a fun look and I've done several that way. This one in particular, I just was wanting the white pattern uh, alternating with the color. So I'm gonna stop there and I'm going to show you how to start if you're not going to do the alternating white and colored pattern. I'm gonna show you how you start your rug on that rhythm. Okay, if you're going to do a rug that um, doesn't alternate white and color and you're just gonna do a random pattern, you can start with one piece of fabric. You don't need to attach two to begin with. So I have one that's here about a yard long. You put it through the hole just like you did in the beginning, wrapping around the rod, and you bring the one tail to the back and forward in the next hole. Take the other tail to the back, forward in the next hole. And this way you can continue without having to start with a connection. When you're doing this, at the, the tails will end, the tails will end at different points is which is what you wanna do. And you might be attaching a color here before you attach a color here. That is what makes a really cool rug. So you're just gonna continue um, with random patterns. Okay, it is time to add another piece here. And I'm going to go ahead and obviously continue this off camera so I don't put you guys to sleep. Uh, but just a couple things to, to um, reiterate. When you're weaving, you're going around two pieces of uh, warp fabric. You're going to get to the end here. The dark comes around to the back. The light goes, comes around on the next one, and you're ready to roll again. And like I said, you'll know you did it right if you have the light dark pattern going sideways as well as the light dark pattern going up and down. Okay, I'm getting here to this end, and this is something I'm gonna wanna show you, because right now you're coming through two knots, two uh, warp things, because of that knot that you started with. Right now I'm going to eliminate those two, and I'm going to make that just one, so that from now on you are going to just be going around one. So I'm going to say that again. You have two here that you're going through because of that knot. If you didn't go through that center, that end would just fall off. So you needed to do that for a couple of rows. You're going to come to this end, but now you're going to bypass the two and you're just going to go to one. But you're still doing okay on the rhythm. I'm going to go um, a couple here so you can see it and then tell you that again. Okay, so you're still good on the rhythm. You have white, dark, white, but instead of going through two there, now you are just one. So when you come back around, you're gonna go through that, uh, or go around that as if it's one, and you're going to just keep the tail hanging down here so that it, it gets fed in there, and then trim it off after you have um, encased three or four inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep working on this when I come back. 
Um, it'll be close to being done and I will show you how to finish it off. Okay, before we turn off the camera, I wanted to make sure that you understood. I didn't know if that last angle was going to do it. So we'll do that uh, part that when you're coming around the end, you have a, um, you've been going through this hole here as a part of the weaving. Now you don't go through that hole anymore. You're gonna go around that and you're gonna continue because in a second here, you will not, won't have a hole to go through because it's just one. So I do that up here so that I can hide the knot. Okay, the trick for this last row I have found is using a standard crochet hook, just a medium size. This is a size I. Uh, if you don't have one, they have these at the thrift stores all of the time. So just grab a medium size crochet hook. We have come down to the end and I have my light and my dark. You come around just like you would all of your other rows and you put your crochet hook in between your warping. Up until now, you have been going over the warping under. So up until now, you've been doing two at a time all the way across. Now stick your crochet hook in between the warping. And so now you can kind of maybe visually what I'm talking about. Now this fabric is in between there and it is locking it in so that it will not come off. So I'm going to continue. I'm going to bring my white to the back and the little crochet hook, just pull it around. Now the crochet hook goes in that same hole and I am going to bring the white fabric forward. Okay, so now we have the white on the front. The dark is on the back. I don't know if you can see that. So then I am going to bring the white to the back by pushing the crochet hook from the back. There we go. Bring the crochet hook to the other hand. Grab the green and bring it forward. Stick this in. Grab the white. Bring it forward. Putting the crochet hook that way to bring the green to the back. You can get in a pretty good rhythm of this. And this last row, uh, once you're done, you will be really close to having a completed rug. So I'm gonna continue this for a few more minutes and I'll show you how I end it off. Okay, the last row is almost complete. You stop um, just when you about have a finger uh, distance between the row and the nails, and that's when you bring in the crochet hook. So you weave all the way up until you about have a finger left. So we've went all the way across, and now I need to bring my green to the back, my dark to the back, and I need to bring my dark to the front. Need to bring my light to the back. My light to the front. Two more to go. I wanted to show you this ending though because there is um, a little bit of, it's not trickery, but uh, intentional uh, movements on how you finish it off so that you don't lose your work. So here I'm bringing the last nail I'm bringing forward my light, taking back my dark, going to bring the dark around the end and I'm going to continue in the same uh, rhythm for about two nails, maybe three nails. So basically you're just like back stitching and sewing. Right now I'm just back stitching. I'm just making sure that we're not gonna lose any, uh, any stitches here. And it is a little tighter now because you're right up against that nail so the crochet hook really is helpful. So I'm gonna do this last one here. And there is, um, at this point, there's not a front and a back to your rug. In a second, you're going to de decide which is your front and your back, but at this point, there is no front and back. So I'm gonna bring these together, 
And I'm just going to simply tie a knot. Just a nice tight knot. And we'll do it twice. And so then we have a knot here. I'm going to take the hook and thread in my tail just a little bit. I'm going to thread it in there. I'm going to do that one more time. Just now you're kind of hiding your tails like you do in crocheting. So I'm going to do this on the green. This one's awful long so that I don't mess up stuff. I'm going to just uh, make it a more manageable length. And hide your tail through some of your stitches here. And it's kind of tight. Let me do that again. There you are. A little stinker. Okay. And one last one. I just the rugs that I have in our house, I've washed, and I think they, they come out okay because I take this extra little step of hiding my ends and securing them. So I'm going to pull that one through, and we are good. So we have just a little bit of a tail there. I'm just going to nip that off and nip that off. Okay, okay. we have the, the rug is all done. This is the little knot that I had uh, finished off, so you can't, can't really even see it at all. Um, the edges are good. This is where the fun begins. Now you pull out your rod. So one rod is out. Pull out your other rod. Now, just carefully, I guess I say carefully, more for your knuckles, because you don't want these nails to rake your knuckles, but they, these rugs are super sturdy. Okay, it is off of the loom. Oh, caught on a little eye there. Off of the loom, look at that. So there are straight corners, straight edges, front and back. At this point, your warping, it has little uh, loops at the end. You just pull the fabric up to it adjust it up and those go away so just with the, on both ends so just take your fingers and you can adjust up to that okay we've pulled uh, the fabric to the ends this is I have determined to be the back of the rug because this is where I put the knot the rugs are a little slippery if you don't put some grippy on it this is just shelf liner it's the foam shelf liner you can get this roll I get ours at Walmart and so it doesn't have to go to the edge. It's just enough to give the rug something to grip. So I just roll it out to about equal distance all the way around. They already kind of have lines on it. So I'm just going to cut straight down here. Out. Just take straight pins and Pin it kind of good because you don't want to have uh, gaps. So I pin my corners first. And then I'll pin a couple on each side. So then after I get this pinned, I'll continue pinning. But I'm going to show you the next step and I'll get this done and show you the finished product. Pick a, a thread that coordinates uh, with the, the fabric as well as your backing and just put it through and loosely slip stitch the backing onto the rug. I have made a lot of these. I've made a lot of them for gifts. Um, and since we do travel to sporting events, I love pinning them ahead of time and just slip stitching them while we're driving. And Ross likes this uh, activity a lot more than me ripping the fabric in his ear while we're driving. So I'm going to go ahead and continue this and uno momento you get to see the finished product. Okay, I have the backing complete. It is all slip stitched and ready to go put into its home which is our powder room. So follow me. Okay, we have our bathroom that is now complete with its new rag rug. I can't tell you how much I love these rugs. I love making them, using up scrap fabric. If I have uh, left out any information or if you have questions, please comment below. And thank you so much for watching this segment of DIY on the house. Please take time to subscribe 
and give us a thumbs up. Thanks so much. 